Hi, my name is Pete Gerlach. Um, and I want to offer you some thoughts in this video about a very complex subject. Uh, the subject is suicide. In my 32 years as a professional family systems therapist, I have listened to a number of people who felt they were in an intolerable amount of physical or emotional pain, psychological pain, and they saw no realistic sources of hope. And they reported that they had thoughts and feelings about ending their lives. Have you ever known such a person? Someone you cared about or even a stranger? Um, the news headlines periodically feature uh, people who did commit suicide or say they have considered it, particularly young people, teenagers, at least in America. I think from my experience, people misunderstand what causes suicide and most people are unaware of a practical way of avoiding suicide except in some special cases. Um, culturally, in all ages and traditions, people have committed suicide for a variety of reasons, but the basic theme is, from an outsider's perspective, uh, the person who kills themselves says, I am now in too much agony, physical or emotional agony, or I expect to be in too much agony. I cannot bear it. I can't stand it. I see no way out. I have to end my life. Most such people, all the way up to the present day in 2012, are unaware of what I'm about to tell you. For 22 years, I have been studying a concept that was first introduced to me by a psychologist in Chicago, a veteran psychologist named Dr. Richard Schwartz. He proposed an idea that is centuries old, but has very little credence publicly. He said that human personalities are made up of parts or subcells, much like the members of a sports team or an orchestra. If you adopt and extend this idea, then the reason for suicidal thoughts and impulses takes on a new meaning. Let me try and explain briefly. Uh, first, a little background. In my work uh, over many years, I have come to see that people who have serious life problems, personal, social, marital, family, parenting, financial, occupational problems, often uh, come from a serious early childhood family dysfunction, parental abandonment, abuse, and neglect. Such survivors of early childhood trauma develop what can be called realistically a fragmented or split personality, meaning your personality is composed of subcells. Two things can occur from that. Uh, I go into great detail explaining these two things in a whole series of videos in what I call Lesson One here on YouTube and in my free nonprofit website. I'm only going to recap here what you can find much more detail there. In effect, what's possible is for many such psychologically wounded people who have fragmented personalities, their lives are ruled by well-meaning but inept personality subcells, which can be called a false self. Typically, such people don't know it, and they wind up, because their false self is not a talented leader, they wind up with significant periods or chronic life problems. When these life problems become insurmountable, and when um, to the person's view, there is no realistic hope to ending psychological or physiological pain. One of the subcells activates, it is a specialist and can be called a suicider. All your personality subcells, each one has a special talent. This subself has the talent of saying, 
I know a way out of this agony and this hopelessness. There is a way out, and here's how to do it. And the suicider provides uh, creative or sometimes def desperate thoughts, images, and motives to end your life. That's what really causes suicide. Notice what I'm saying. Having your life managed by a false self is the true cause of suicide. Not feeling hopeless or trapped uh, unless you have uh, uh, a physical disease without a cure. That is a special case. I'm talking about life problems that are not organic um, but still produce an enormous amount of anguish and pain. The real cause is having your life ruled by a false self. The alternative to that, which most people don't know, and I spent 22 years studying and I've seen it work among hundreds of people, I've experienced it work in my own life. The alternative is learning who your sub-selves are they're an interesting group, and they're very dedicated to keeping you safe, no matter what. Um, learning who your sub-selves are, finding out who is running your life, and if it is not your innately wise, resident, true self, which is like the conductor of an orchestra or the talented coach of an athletic team, everyone has a true self. It's a normal part of their personality. It's, it's stronger in some people than in others, but if your true self is overwhelmed and disabled by other sub cells, then you are vulnerable to suicidal thoughts and feelings and impulses and actions. I hope what I'm trying to present here is self-evident. If you feel that life's problems are insurmountable, I am excluding specifically unbearable physical uh, pain and incurable illness. That is a special category. But otherwise, if you feel your life problems are absolutely too much and you cannot bear another day, be aware there is an alternative that you're, you've not known of before. Our society doesn't teach us this. If you say, I want, if you have sub-selves that say, no, no, we want to live, and other sub-selves that say we're so tired and there's no hope and it's, it's unbearable, the pain, the, the confusion, the stress is unbearable. If you have sub-selves that say, but wait, wait, life is precious, and especially if you're a parent or a grandparent or a spouse and you want to live, here is an alternative. If you spend some amount of time, several weeks perhaps, studying the content of lesson one in my YouTube videos and or my ad-free, non-commercial, um, non-profit website, sfhelp.org, lesson one will show you how to meet your sub-cells realistically this is not pie in the sky. Anyone can do this. Meet your sub-selves. Find out those who don't trust your true self. Work with them to establish such trust. Free your true self. And together with a group of very positive, talented sub-selves, you can find a way out of your life problems. And you can continue your life and manifest your life purpose. This has all kinds of ramifications, especially if you are a parent. I'm not going to take our time here in this brief video to go into them. The main thing I want to propose to you is, if you yourself feel suicidal at any time, currently or chronically, and if you know somebody who feels suicidal and you care deeply about them, consider if they, the other person, or if you get to know your sub-selves and you try out the very practical technique called inner family therapy, which lesson one will instruct you on, 
you can free your true self, who is innately wise, a talented leader, creative, sees things long range, not short range, just short range, and can help you, often with spiritual help, if you're that kind of a person, can find a way out of your um, hopeless situation. I want to note, uh, as a side note, those of you who know teenagers who are talking about suicide or who actually commit suicide, in my judgment as a veteran family therapist, this is a clear sign of family dysfunction. Teenage suicide is a strong positive indicator one or both parents or adults in charge are survivors of early childhood trauma of their own. They are psychologically wounded, they are ruled by false selves, and they are not able to provide the nurturance that young children need. A suicidal teenager, whether they're bullied by schoolmates or online people or other circumstances, is a sign their parents need help right now. They need help from a veteran family therapist. If you know any, any teenagers that are talking suicide or have behavioral symptoms of suicide, try and influence their parents to get help. Here are a couple of links um, for further resources if you choose to resource this very powerful subject further. Here is a link to Lesson 1 videos on YouTube. Uh, they present a summary of the full Lesson 1, which is a self-improvement online, do-it-yourself, self-education lesson on the web. Uh, here are the links to the videos. Here is a link to the lesson itself in the website. And lastly, here is a link to an article that is part of Lesson 1, which goes into much more detail than what I have done here in this brief video. The article is about preventing suicide and providing a new alternative. One last point. This is a personal note on, from me. My witness is, um, I myself have experienced suicidal periods and times, and in reaction to that, I have found that the widespread prevailing attitude among many people in least Western countries, I don't know about Asian countries or Eastern countries, but the prevailing attitude is that suicide is weakness, is cowardice, is an easy way out, is a sin, and even a crime, a legal crime. Uh, you have probably heard in recent years of the celebrated case of Jack Kevorkian, the doctor who made it his life mission to help assisting people who were in intolerable, incurable positions end their lives, lives with dignity. I propose that countries like Holland and Switzerland and other countries and United States uh, state of Oregon which allows assisted suicide under special conditions. I propose they are leading the way in a humane treatment of people who need to retain the right to decide about their own life or death. Uh, I don't know what your feelings are on that, and it's beyond this, the bulk of this video, but I did want to make this at least position statement. Just to recap, the point of this video is if you or someone you care about reaches a point of ultimate despair, do not think it's the external circumstances that are the problem. The problem is you or the other person is probably run by a false self. That is correctable. I hope you will invest further time and effort in studying Lesson 1 and see if you agree with what I'm proposing. If you have questions about this, I'm um, absolutely delighted to entertain any kind of feedback at all about this video or any other videos or the website. Thanks for watching.